If you're in the market for an easy to use yet very powerful video editor that you can use instead of CapCut due to the ban or the possible ban, today I'm gonna introduce you to Filmora, which is exactly that. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get going. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited to finally be back with some regular videos. Today I'm gonna introduce you to Filmora, which you can already see on my screen right here. I have been using Filmora for a couple of years already. I started with Filmora 13, I think it was, and they are always and continuously improving, which is very awesome. If you are new to the channel, welcome, super excited to have you. My name is Julian, I'm a content creator, I'm an entrepreneur, and on this channel, I talk about exactly that. So if you want to improve your video skills, your video editing skills, or you want to become an entrepreneur, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. So today I'm gonna give you a very quick overview over Filmora itself, and then I'm gonna show you four of my favorite features in depth. So this is what Filmora looks like when you're opening it up. And first of all, it is very similar to all of the other video editors. Like it doesn't matter if you're coming from Premiere Pro, Final Cut, CapCut, VN, whatever it is, it is a basic video editor on steroids, I would say. And on one side, what I really like about Filmora is that it's very user friendly and easy to use, yet it is still very powerful. So for me personally, I'm shooting tons of content with my smartphone. I'm, you know, very active on social media and YouTube. But on the other side, I also am a professional filmmaker and I run a video agency. So I shoot very high production videos and I shoot tons of stuff with my smartphone and I think Filmora is able to build like a very nice balance between the two. So this is what it looks like. This is what the, you know, overview looks like. If you want to get started with a new project, I'm just going to show you that real quick. Just tap on new project and this is what Filmora looks like. So it won't be like a super in-depth overview in case you want to see that. I will link it up there. I made that with a previous version, but generally speaking, like this is where you can import your videos. Here you have your timeline. You can directly add access, stock media, audio, titles, transitions, effects, like all of this, very simple, very easy to use in case you just want to import a couple of clips, like you can just, you know, double tap here and import it. Or what you can do is just also, you know, just drag and drop it here into the video. It's asking you to create a proxy file. I'm just gonna say, no, my computer is fast enough. I can just drag and drop that into the timeline. I would say like, yeah, match it to the media. This is also something that is very awesome in case I want to transform it. So it's like very basic stuff. Like it's, as many mentioned before, it's not going to be like a super in-depth overview, but just so that you know, it's like a very regular video editor. So no matter like where you're coming from, you should be able to use it quite fast. Um, one of my favorite things is also the speed ramping just here. Like you can customize it. You have a couple of presets as well. Coming from Premiere Pro, having this kind of, um, you know, uh, speed ramping tool, I would say is just very awesome. Also, when it comes to the color correction and the color enhancement as a whole, I love that you can use LUTs. Um, this something that um, you could not do on the smartphone with CapCut, for example. So I have a whole lot pack that I created for myself, especially for a smartphone, but also for professional cameras. The fact that I can use that super fast, super easy. Also comparing it to Final Cut, for example, um, it's just a lot easier when it comes to color correction. Like, you know, I am a professional filmmaker. I have been editing videos for, I don't know, 10 years, but the color palette was like very confusing in Final Cut. And I love that it's like, okay, I want a little bit more contrast. It's a little too bright, bring up the shadows. That's basically a little bit of a vibrance, a little bit of saturation and boom, ready to go. Put on my lot onto this and this is perfectly done. So again, super fast, super easy, but like, again, this is not an, an entire overview. I'm now gonna share with you like my four favorite features of four of my favorite AI features because I mentioned at the beginning that this is a very powerful editor, not just for regular video editing, but especially also when it comes to um, using AI features and speeding up the whole process, which I think is going to be the future of video editing like these days, you know, when it comes to automatic captions and stuff like there are so many options already. And I think Filmora is at the very front when it comes to AI video editing tools. But again, I'm going to show you my four favorite ones right now. All right. So I mentioned before that Filmora has a bunch of AI tools. And in case you want to access them or get an overview over exactly what they have, I just reopened the app, just tap on these three dots right here. And then this window pops up right here. And here you can see like all of the brand new AI features. And this is something that I love about Filmora. It's like they are not standing still and, you know, relying on what they have done in the past. It's like they are constantly adding new stuff, which is just very awesome. So silence detection is really cool for these tutorial videos, for example, AI copywriting, instant cutter, like there are a bunch of different options. And again, I will review them in the future. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. But for now, I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite features and how they're working. So first up, let's get started with auto reframe. 
And as you can see, like this video here is shot in 16 by nine. And if I want to get a vertical version for social media, um, the auto reframe of um, Filmora is gonna do that. So let's just tap on that and let's see how this goes. So it says drag or import a video here, start reframing. Again, it's always like super easy to use that. So um, what I'm gonna do is I will just take this video right here. And um, this is a video clip of Alex where he was filming myself and in the video, I'm just doing a parallax of him and I just want him to be in the center of the frame all time. So I want this for social media, then it's analyzing in the background and you can see he's perfectly in the center of the frame all the time. Super easy, super fast. You can also like once you have made like an entire YouTube video, for example, and you want to get a couple of clips for, you know, social media, just import them right here and let it analyze. You saw this was basically in real time. Just click on export and boom, you're ready to go. Super awesome. Love that feature. The next feature I want to show you is the AI portrait cutout. I'm sure you've seen this on social media in ads or also on YouTube, maybe where the background gets cut out. And then, you know, behind the person who's talking, you'll see some text or some animation or whatever it's going to be. And let's see how that goes. So again, we just tap on that. And then again, it's asking us to import a clip. So yeah, there is the video. Just click on open. And then again, it's asking me to create a proxy file. No, I don't want that. I want it to match my media. And now you can see it's already analyzing in the background and boom, there it's done. It's already cut out my um, background. Um, as you can see with my hair, like as you can see, I have some very crazy hair going on. Um, it's struggling a little bit, but I think it's still doing a yeah, pretty good job. And here, for example, I could just whatever, let's just pick a sticker or a text or whatever, like I could say just subscribe to my channel. And then it's just um, downloading that from their um, database. And then I'm all I need to do is just place it below my layer. So this is like a layer system. So what's below is going to be behind. And then again, I could just go here and change the position, um, not the position of myself, but also of the background. So doing it like this, something like this. And yeah, I could also add some animation and stuff. But just the fact that this works within just a couple of seconds is just really awesome. Because you know, doing that manually in I don't know, After Effects or Premiere Pro, is going to take forever. And as you have seen, like this more or less works in real time. So very awesome feature. Is it perfect? No, it's never going to be, especially, you know, since this was a clip that I recorded with the front camera of my iPhone. Again, like if I would have shot this with um, professional camera that I'm using right here, it would have been better. But I think still it's going to be more than good enough, especially for social media purposes. The next feature is also very exciting and I have not used that myself yet. So I'm very curious to see how this goes. And that is the AI object remover. And you can see like you can just remove move an entire car out of a very dynamic scene. Again, doing this in After Effects, this would take like hours and days to do that. So let's see how that goes. And again, I have prepared a clip, um, which I'm not sure if this is going to work well. So it's going to be this clip right here where I was flying um, through the Austrian Alps, or maybe this is still Swiss. And what I want to do is I will want to see like, can I remove this wing right here? Like this is a pretty big portion. And you know, in these samples, it was just like removing a pole or something. But let's actually see how that goes. And let's see how all of this goes. Um, as I mentioned before, I have not used that myself yet. So yeah, let's just see if this is working. Yes, it has selected all of that. And now let's click on remove. Analyzing that is also track it. So um, if this was like a, an even more dynamic scene, then this would also be like following that around. You can see it's again calculating in the background. Very interested to see how this is going to look. It's like when working with Photoshop and you're, I don't know, like letting the AI do its things. It's always very interesting to see. As you can see, this is a very taxing thing. So you can see my processors are kicking up. So in case you're having a, like a slower computer, then this might take a little longer. All right. So after a couple of minutes, now I have the result and I have my own learning for this. And what I can recommend you if you try this feature, and I have been doing a little bit of research whilst it has been rendering in the background, it does work very well for smaller portions of the image and for easier scenarios, you know, where it's like you have a shot of yourself and in the background, there's a pole or something like this. For this, it's working really well. In this specific scenario with um, the wing, it's like, you know, the rendering here. Also with the, you know, there's not enough detail for uh, the 
the program to make that work. So um, yeah, th this result is not perfect, but again, like, you know, this was a very extreme example and yeah, so this did not work out too well, but for smaller things, for poles and stuff that you have in your image, for those things, it is gonna work well. But again, still very cool that you have these kind of features. All right, and last but not least, I want to show you the automated AI background music generation. So again, we go here to our overview and there we have the smart BGM generation. And it's like you upload a clip, it's analyzing in the background, like what you're talking about in the clip. And then based on what you're talking about, AI is gonna generate the background music for you. So that's the theory behind it. So we just click on that. And I'm again, just selecting the clip that I want. Taking this clip here again, create proxy file. I will say no again, match to media. And then it says smart BGM generation. You can see these are like the AI credits that I currently have. I mean, it's only gonna take up two of my credits. So let's start that. And then it's analyzing in the background. Again, as I mentioned before, what I'm saying in that video, and then it's gonna tailor the background music exactly to that. So let's see how long this is gonna take and how it sounds. So there you can see in the background, it's in progress and here at the top with all of these AI features, you can see like how quick this is going. And this is not a super long clip, it's only 15 seconds. Um, especially if you have like a very long clip, like 20 minutes or something, it is gonna take a little longer, but for shorter clips and short form content, it's, it's actually working really damn fast. And as you can see, we are done. Let's see how that sounds. All right, so this is a quick test of the AI cutout. Um, I have a light here behind It's very me. smooth, it's, I don't know, is it jazz? I don't know. It's a little bit too loud, but I can just turn down the volume here. Minus 30. This is like a very usual scenario here on how you would see something like this. Yeah, so you it's actually like I could definitely see myself using that. I would actually take it just like this and use that for social media. So yeah, in case you have not downloaded Filmora yet, it will be the first link below that like button. I will also include a discount code for yourself and they do also have a free trial. So make sure you give it a shot in case you are looking for a video editor to replace CapCut. Thank you so much for watching. In case you have not seen the video where I'm talking about the DJI OM7P versus the Hoem M7 and make sure you give this video over there a watch.